consumer credit transaction. All right, let's talk about it. When anytime that these folks is using your uh, social security number, whenever they're using your social security number for anything, then they're playing the role of your trustee to your trust. The, the credit that you're getting is actually accessing money from your SESTA K trust, all right? Theoretically, right, all this stuff that I'm talking about is for educational purposes or uh, maybe even entertainment. You know what? Yeah, it's just entertainment. You tell me if this stuff makes sense. And so whenever you're doing these transactions, say you're buying a car, for example, right? You're buying a car. You're not paying cash. No cash even leaves your bank account and goes into nobody else's bank account as far as you're aware of, right? Like, where's the money coming from? And a lot of people don't ever think, like, where's the money coming from whenever I go get approved for credit? Like, because we know that there is clear regulations that say that these institutions, these financial institutions cannot lend their own money. OK, so if you're not lending me your money, then where's the money coming from? OK, think about this. It's also, for example, if you are trying to borrow from a bank, a bank might even have this money that it, they're giving to you, quote unquote, or giving you access to or originating, creating out of thin air, you know, wherever it's coming from. Right. They're doing this. But they can they cannot borrow your they cannot lend borrowed money. OK, so if you have your money in a bank account and it's your savings or your checking account, right, you're actually giving a loan to the bank. So they actually have to pay you interest on that money. OK, you can come up with your own agreements and, and, and contracts with these banks and all that stuff. You can determine your own interest and how much you're going to charge them for your money and all that. But that's a whole nother video. But whenever you're doing these transactions, you got to know that the whole time these financial institutions are actually not giving you any of their own money. And that that's why you don't owe them any money, because they're actually supposed to be charging a fee whenever they're doing the transaction. They're being your trustee. So they're supposed to charge a trustee fee. And it's supposed to be that simple. You're just supposed to benefit as the beneficiary to your trust. So if you say, hey, I need a car for the benefit of my trust. All right, cool. You could go get a car and they actually can't deny you for anything. If there's a million dollars put in your trust um, when you first originated and then they're growing this account yearly and yearly, putting potentially tens of millions of dollars or more into it. Right. Theoretically, if there is some imaginary trust out there that isn't so imaginary and maybe it's just few of us know about it and you can get anything you want to get out of it and you actually don't owe anybody any money because it's already paid for it's prepaid it's all paid in full you know who responsible whose responsibility it is to cover all the debts of the u.s citizens is the responsibility of the united states okay so we know uh house joint resolution 192 if we know public law 72-10 and if we're doing these consumer credit transactions and we know 15 usc 1605 then we know that we can only do these transactions and benefit from them. We're not actually supposed to be putting in any work whatsoever. We're just supposed to benefit. We're supposed to receive this stuff, whether it's the cash, the uh, car, the house, whatever you need, food, clothing, a new laptop, all this stuff. They're supposed to be paying for it, period, because these are the things that we feel like we need for our survival. And it is the responsibility of the United States to do what? cover all of the debts of its citizens okay of course all of them things i just cited you could just simply ask chat gbt or google google it or something bro like this information is public knowledge okay if you know the truth in lending act and you know that there's actually a lot of information that these uh consumer credit quote-unquote agencies um who are supposed to be doing things for your benefit are doing um, you know that there's a lot of information that they're actually be obligated or supposed to at least disclose to you before you even enter into these contracts. So whenever you're entering into a contract where it's like, OK, I'm supposed to be making sure that I come up with sixty thousand dollars for this car that I want to buy. I don't have sixty thousand dollars or maybe I do, but I don't want to use my cash for this. Then it's like, OK, you supposed to get. All of the information, the truth in lending statement. When you go to the dealerships, for example, truth, uh, you go to a car dealership, 
you tell them, give me the truth of lending statement whenever you're at the finance table. This is this is after you already done figured out what car you want to get and, you know, picked it out and all that stuff and, and made all your specific requests. When you're talking to the finance person, only talk to the finance person. Whenever you're at a car dealership, you ain't even supposed to be talking to like a salesman about no finance stuff. They might ask you some finance questions, but that's definitely across their scope of knowledge and it's beyond their job description and it's actually low key illegal. But hey, either way. So if you're doing all this stuff and you need to benefit from whatever it is that, it, that, that your life requires, you're supposed to do all this stuff and then the entire time, theoretically, all of these people, these agencies have already been paid with your trustee fee. So you actually don't have to make no monthly payments on that car. You actually don't have to make any payments on anything that you got benefit from. This is the whole thing. This is actually a real thing. But, you know, like I, I like to say uh, this food for thought or do your own research. You know, it's great to say that, but. Like, bro, you're going to find out that I'm speaking the truth. But whenever you diving down this rabbit hole, it's a whole lot of like traps and it's a lot of agents who be trying to trick you and confuse you and even talk to you like you don't know what you're talking about when you're looking at them right in the face. Let me tell you a story about what happened at a car dealership just not too long ago, earlier today. I went to a car dealership. Long story short, I was here for one of my friends. I'm, I'm here for one of my friends. They just bought a car. They wanted to swap the car out for another car that they just bought. All right, cool. Of course, I'm doing this quick because I don't want this video to be too long. But my homie uh, said that these folks are trying to tell him that he couldn't swap the car out or get his money back for the car he just bought. I was like, bro, what you talking about? Then I said, wait, did you put a down payment on that car? Bro said, yeah. I'm like, what you doing putting a down payment on the car? Don't you know that you're not supposed to do that? Of course, he don't know that. But it's definitely like like I said, if you look at 15 USC 1605, you're going to clearly see that all of the things that have to do with you accessing your credit, the entire scope of everything that it comes with that expense is supposed to be taken care of through your credit. It's not supposed to be you mixing cash and credit in a transaction. Them two totally different things. That's wrong. That's illegal. But people don't realize what they're talking about. Like I use the word illegal and unlawful like interchangeably. Some people who really know about this legal jargon may or may not do that, but you get my point. But while you're doing all of this, this is information that you got to know when you're dealing with these folks, because if they know that if they've realized that you don't really know what the rules are that they have to follow, they're just going to take advantage of you. And you're just going to be like another one of these people. But there's so much to know. Like, it's a lot to know. But I'll be having folks hit me up and they be asking me questions like um, how they can like just get a car or get a house and not really seeing the big picture of things. But you really, first of all, it ain't going to happen fast. Because you got to have enough knowledge to not only be able to get the stuff, but you got to be able to keep the stuff. And you can make a lot of mistakes in and throughout it. And, of course, the really the best way for you to learn this game is through experience. And, hey, especially when you don't know anybody else who's living this life or playing this game or at least participating and trying to figure out what they actually are supposed to be having access to their entire life. So, you know, you, you just got to do what you can with as much information as you can accumulate. Of course, my YouTube channel is a, a clear, uh, good tool to utilize. I got some information, but you, you got to get it from a lot of places, bro. If you really want to get this stuff, you got to read books. You got to just get a lot of people's perspective and then come up with your own. But this is some real stuff. But anyway, so I'm talking to the dude who's the finance guy when I finally get him in the room because I, I was talking to the the salesman, we in his office, he started talking finance stuff. I'm like, wait, um, what about the truth and lending statement? I asked this dude about the truth and lending statement. He's acting like, what, what are you talking about? And, I, and I'm talking about, isn't this a consumer credit transaction that's happening? And he's like, oh, uh, I, I, you, you'll have to ask somebody else. Uh, I, I don't work in finance. I was like, oh, you don't even work in finance? Oh, bring the finance guy in here. So the finance guy come in there, right? Both of these dudes is already shook because they realize they're talking to somebody who know what they're talking about. And I'm calling them out on their stuff. So the, the, the finance dude get in there, right? He asked me, what am I trying to accomplish? I said, I'm simply trying to make sure that my client here has a clear understanding of what's actually going on here. And then he asked me the same thing like four more times. As I'm sitting here requesting specifically to see the truth and lending statement, I said, this institution participates in the in truth and lending, doesn't it? Of course it does. You have to. And I'm like, what are you talking about? 
it's clear that the Truth and Lending Act tells you that you have to disclose any of the information and all of the information about this transaction to the consumer. So he's trying to like dodge and dodge and dodge. He's like, oh, well, well, well that paper's over there. And, Cause like I said, my homie had already bought another car. So he had his paperwork from the car he just had bought. And he's, he's trying to say all this stuff like, oh, uh, you can't return the, the car and we, uh, we don't have to take it back and all this stuff. And I'm like, bro, what are you talking about? If, if he's supposed to be benefiting, it literally says it in the contract. I pointed out in the contract where it says he got 30 days to cancel the stuff. So I just had these fools looking stupid. I'm reading the contract. I actually read the contract. I'm pointing out the stuff it says. And I'm talking about the laws that anybody could clearly research. Like, come on, bro. I said, bro, you do this for a living and you acting like you don't know about truth and lending. And of course, he's standing there looking stupid. Or should I say sitting there? And like I said, he started trying to just get on this loop. Uh, well, what are you trying to accomplish? As I'm simply asking him, I'm like, bro, I already answered that question. And of course, I'm not being hostile or anything. And actually, he started getting hostile with me. So I had to point out to him, I'm like, bro, I, I'm not trying to be hostile or difficult or have any hostility. I'm just simply trying to get a clear understanding of what's going on here. And of course, you know, I'm being all articulate and stuff. You know how you supposed to play the game. I went in there and all black and everything. You, you, you know what I'm saying? And I'm in there talking to this dude and he realized he wasn't going to win with me. So the first chance he got, boom, he ran out the room just like the last dude did. And of course, I ended up having to see this fool later anyway, but that's, that's all another thing. But the point that I'm making here is you got to really stand on what you're talking about. And if you have to pull out some documents to prove what you're talking about, you know, actually pull up the United States code. If, you, if that's what you got to do, like I'm, I'm talking about if you really trying to represent yourself whenever you're going and doing these transactions and stuff. You really got to be able to produce some proof sometimes, too. But it's really good to be able to recite all this stuff on the top of your head. The better I am at reciting these things, it's really easy to make sure that somebody can follow me. And it makes it really easy for me to keep keep up with all of this stuff, because there's a lot of laws and stuff to memorize and what they say and what they mean. You know, there's a bunch of combined vocabulary words, letters and numbers. And anyway, so I just wanted to mention that stuff. Of course, they ended up giving him his money back for the car, uh, you know, after playing all of these mind games and sh bro, they playing all these mind games going back and forth, acting like they can't do it. And then, of course, in the end, they do it because, duh, they have to. And they're trying to ask for some more for a down payment. I'm like, nah, bro, you actually supposed to. I told my homie, you actually supposed to get your money back for that down payment you made because they ain't even supposed to require no down payment. Then when we get to the finance table later in the day, when he picked out the new car he wanted, these fools had the nerve to actually say or ask him if he wanted to put down more money on the car. I'm looking like, bro, you you finna get slapped the shit out of. But these fools, they they try you. They they'll really try you, and. Of course, I'm still sitting right there, and he ain't trying to make no eye contact with me, like, at all. And he wanted, he wanted me out as soon as possible, because, of course, I'm making his job difficult. Because normally, he scam people left and right, and they're oblivious to it all. But every once in a while, somebody like me show up, and I'm with all the shits. So, anyway, I just wanted to share this story to y'all just to kind of give an example, of, like a real-life example of something I've experienced before. And believe me, I got a lot of experience at car dealerships. But, like, I... I I think it's important to get stuff out like this because this is my opportunity to not only tell the story, but also be able to spit out some of the knowledge that I got about this because I ain't all structured and organized with this. Like there's a whole curriculum. Like I'm just spitting this stuff out to try to give you all some information to get y'all going. I ain't really the type of dude to really do this full time, but I do this every once in a while because I'm trying to look out for, for y'all. And, you know, I love all y'all. So we, we, we got to figure this out together. And I'm getting to somewhere and it's definitely a lot of people that be in the comment section. I see y'all really getting y'all think on, too. So. I appreciate all of y'all. Till next time.